Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Jack Canfield. And with me today is Dr. Annie White, who's the author of The Calm Code. And Annie's a doctor of Eastern medicine, and she's developed a powerful step-by-step method to rewire your brain to be relaxed and happy based on the science of neuroplasticity, which we'll talk about. Welcome to the show, Annie. Thank you. I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm really excited to have you on the show because as just mentioned, you've developed a six-week step-by-step process to rewire the brain to eliminate high stress, anxiety, and feelings of overwhelm, and to be relaxed, happy, and balanced. This is something the world needs. So I'd like to start by asking you, how did you figure out your step-by-step method in your book? Great question. I was seeing patients in my office and everyone that came in was rooted in stress. I saw it either causing or exacerbating everything that people were seeing me for. And I know that any person who deals with healthcare around the country sees the same thing. And I kept thinking to myself, and this is going to date me, but I kept thinking, gosh, I wish I had a floppy disk that I could just like put in all of their brains, you know, and then boop, update, and then all the wiring would be updated, the stress would be gone and everything would be fine. The way that I was trained is I don't treat symptoms. I look for why. And that's, you know, I'm kind of like a health detective. So I became like a health and stress detective. So I, I looked into the science of the brain. And once I found neuroplasticity, I, I knew I was onto something. It said, every thought we think wires our brain. Okay. So if people are stressed, they get more and more and more stressed, right? And the brain just keeps wiring that way. And negativity is hand in hand with stress just because of the negative bias, just because our stress response makes us think of worst case scenarios so we can you know, run away from a bear. But in everyday life, we don't need that. So once I figured that out and I figured out why we got into the situation, I worked backwards to fix it. And I looked at all of the scientifically proven ways to wire your brain to be calm, happy, and balanced. So then what I did was I put those together into tools. And what makes my tools different and special from other things is that I use more than one technique in each tool. So for example, gratitude has been proven to wire people's brains to be more positive. And a lot of people are aware of that. I did use gratitude in some of the tools, but then I interspersed it with all these different aches that have also been proven. So it makes it super powered. Now, One of the things that underlies your whole book is this concept of neuroplasticity. Explain what that is and why it's so important that we understand that. When you continually think the same type of thoughts, the neurons in your brain make connections and thought upon thought upon thought will strengthen those connections. And when I was doing my research, what I also found was interesting was that negative and positive thoughts have different neural connections, different neural pathways in the brain. And you can actually think more stressful thoughts and strengthen those pathways, or you can think more positive thoughts and strengthen those pathways. And I'm simplifying things right now for negative and positive thoughts. You could do it. You can do it with playing the piano. You can do it um, with, there's a famous study on London's cab drivers. You know, they strengthened those parts of their brain because they had to memorize the maps of London. So neuroplasticity basically says the more type of thought you think, the stronger those areas of the brain will get. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And and when I was looking at your manuscript for your book, I I thought, you know, the idea of plastic, meaning it can be molded, the brain can be molded into a new brain. And by creating these new neural pathways, and by reinforcing them through repetition, uh, whether you're practicing a piano piece, or whether you're practicing thinking positive, or thinking thoughts of gratitude, or looking at pictures of things that make you happy, et cetera. Basically, we literally have the capacity. And this is what I loved about your book, is that within you know, 12 weeks, you could literally have a new brain, a new state of being that you're, you're, you know, we have a default mode that most of us go to. And for the majority of people in our, our world, it, it's negative. And we can, re- we, we can create a new state where it, it becomes something that it's the defaulting to the positive. And we never learned about that in school. <laughs> and now we're exactly. learning about it. Yeah. And I think you touched on something very important that I didn't, and it's the default mode. It's the path of least resistance, because those are the thoughts that, 
you know, if those, let's say those neural pathways, and if we're just talking about negative and positive, and I'm kind of just reiterating what you said, mm -hmm. if the negative ones are stronger, they're going to take over that quick, aren't they? Than right. the positive ones. So if you can build the positive ones to be as strong or stronger than the negative ones, then you have a more positive brain than a more stressed brain. And I think what's interesting too is this concept of pruning, where if you're if you're not using a certain, if a certain neural pathway is not being reinforced, eventually at night the brain starts to prune those, it eliminates them. So you're more likely to then stay in the positive if you've been developing that. That's exactly right. Cool. Now you've you've used this these principles, this these tools, this technique, this uh, process in your own life. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this was either fortunately or unfortunately, as it were, that I got into a really tough position. I had a stretch of time. It was over a year and it was it was a really I, I cry every time I talk about this. It's, it's sorry, but it was hard. And finally, I came to the conclusion that I actually needed the tools that I've been using for my patients and I've been using them over the years. And it wasn't like I sat down with my patients and said, we're going to work on your neuroplasticity. I would just, you know, toss out these tools to them. And I, they'd like, Oh, Annie, these are great. These work really well, but I, I didn't know. I'm like, yeah, they're, you know, what if they're just trying to be nice or whatever? So I dedicated myself to these tools because I was desperate. My marriage was on, uh, it was on the verge of breaking and I thought I would love this to work and it can't hurt. So I used it and I was very committed to the tools and I was very happy when it did work. I was like, oh my gosh, this actually really, really, really works. So thank goodness. And I'm still married. <laughs> very good. No, I think when someone's experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety and, and pressure and negativity, it, it obviously affects your relationships. And you were able to prove not only through your clients, but yourself that you that when you applied these, they work. And there's nothing more, it gives you more confidence, if you will, than in your own experience. Um, you talk about your method as a happy method. Can you just unpack that for just a moment? The happy method, it's an acronym for the tools that mm -hmm. I give people. So it's a six week process. And the reason that I called it the happy method is because we're strengthening both your calm neural pathways and your happy neural pathways in this process. So I thought it was important to bring in the happy aspect. The H is for what's called happy sparks. Do you want me to tell a little more about it or? Yeah, yeah. you could do a sentence or two because I think, you know, because okay. I, I love it. It's cool. Oh, thank you. The happy sparks is basically looking at pictures that spark your, your positive neural pathways. And you set aside certain times during the day and you look at these pictures and I give extensive instructions on, on how to do that. A is um, the appreciably tools and it incorporates appreciation and love and future visualization and best possible self exercises. Um, the next one is P and it's called five breathing. And I name it five breathing because you get a high five for remembering to do it. And the thing I love about this technique that um, I figured out in my research was if you close off your right nostril and you just breathe in and out your left nostril, you strengthen your parasympathetic or your calm nervous system. Well, you activate it. Some studies do say strengthen it, but I'll say you activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So it helps you calm down faster. Um, and I give also extensive instructions on how to do the breathing method. The next one is peaceful habits. I don't try to teach people how to meditate, but it's giving you all the benefits, all of the people that are doing it. Jack Canfield is doing it. You need to do it basically like that. I is imagine it be it. So this is a technique where you imagine your best possible self in a certain time frame, And the idea is that once you imagine it, you can become it. And of course, if you have your dream life, what neural pathways are you are you building every day? Mm -hmm. And then the last one is called the Imagica technique. And it's a visualization technique. The reason I named it Imagica is because emotions are the magic of this technique. Because if you think about visualization, you don't really want the objects or the things or the people or the situations. You want the emotions that they're gonna bring you 
right? So that's what we target in that. We First, we want the emotions, then you can have fun with the details. And if you're focusing on positive emotions, you're also building your common happy neural pathways. Yeah, and I just wanna to say to those of you watching, what you just heard are like the tip of an iceberg because what Annie's done so well in the book, <clears throat> excuse me, what she's done so well in the book is that she said, I give a lot of examples, a lot of techniques, a lot of details. And as I was reading through it, it was like, oh God, there's all these nuances that I wasn't aware of, things you can do to make it better and just different applications. And so it's just a lot of valuable, valuable information. And I think the other thing that I wanna stress for people about this book, and you can talk about it for a minute, is you talk about starting with three minute exercises twice a day, leading up to eight minutes a day, twice a day or, uh, you know, like 16 minutes total. And because so many people, the reason they don't do these things is they're afraid they're going to take too long. They don't have enough time. Everybody has six minutes. Everybody has 16 minutes as you develop these tools, you develop your muscles, if you will, over time. And to realize that you can literally rewire your brain in 12 weeks, just spending a few minutes a day. Talk about that. I love that you brought that up because I think it's really important. The research does support that eight minutes twice a day rewires your brain. And the reason you could do one 16 minute session a day. The reason I split it up is because you're setting yourself on the right pathways, neural pathways, each time you do it. So you're interrupting any sort of negative thought patterning that you would have twice instead of once. And it's kind of easier to concentrate if you have small increments than big ones, just because of the crazy world we live in and our brains are like Mexican jumping beans. But I think <laughs> what you pointed out, what you pointed out is important. And I was really happy because when I started all of this research, I was thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get people to do this for two hours a day? Right. And they don't have to eight minutes, twice a day. There you go. There you go. Now, you said that when you were researching and came across a statistic that stopped you in your tracks, is that the statistic we just talked about or was there another one? No, I love the statistic you just talked about, but there's a different one. Okay. The COVID pandemic is actually causing anxiety, depression. Some studies even say schizophrenia. That scared me, you know? And as soon as I heard that, I wanted to get this book into the hands of anyone who needed it, because unless they take steps to undo that damage, and I'm not faulting anyone. I mean, a pandemic is incredibly, incredibly stressful inherently. I mean, you can't get around that. Of course it is. But the problem is, is that it does cause those effects. So if people have something that they can use to undo that damage, that's what I wanted to bring to the table. Beautiful. Well, it's obvious there's so much stress that's come. We've got teachers that are retiring. We've got our medical staff all burned out. And so I just want to let everyone know that this is a great book. Uh, I bring on a lot of authors to interview, and this is one of the best books I've ever literally interviewed anyone about. It's just, and that's why I'm so happy to have you here. If people want to get a copy of your book, if they want to learn more about your work, where do they go? The book they can find easily on Amazon. You can check your local bookstore and if they don't have it, bug them to get it. And I'm at dranniewhite.com and doctor is just spelled out D-O-C-T-O-R Annie, A-N-N-I-E white.com. Okay, good. Well, thanks for joining us today, Annie. I really appreciate it. I am really honored that you had me here. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of the amazing work that you have done for the positive energy on our planet. You have been one of the major people to contribute to the well-being of this entire planet. Thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you for watching today, for joining us. And make sure to tune in again next week. I'll be interviewing another thought leader in the field of human potential that can help you live a happier, more successful, more fulfilling life. Until then, make sure to get a copy of The Calm Code and start rewiring your brain as soon as possible. See you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.